Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This match is going to be between Lore and David Kim. We have Lore starting at the 12 o'clock position as the Tan Zerg. David Kim starting at the 6 o'clock position as the Teal Protoss. And I know what you're thinking if you kept up with all of this. Uh, David Kim is, in fact, a Zerg player. And Well, in the semifinals, he ran up against Lore, who's a Zerg, and he doesn't like Zerg versus Zerg. So he preferred play a match that he felt was less random, which is Zerg versus Protoss. That also helps him with his other matchups. Although in Zerg versus Protoss, he tends to go for those quick breaks, and he's really, really nice unit control. Great guy, really fun guy on the UCSD team and UC Pro League, and uh, yeah, um, really good player, very, very nice unit control uh, overall, and pretty good macro to boot. So anyway, it looks like Lord's going to check out that 3 o'clock position. Looks like David Kim starting to push out. He's probably going to set up on the secondary, um, going for a fast expansion here, yeah, putting down that pile on there. Um, I do have to say that, just FYI, I do know the results of these matches because I got to see them live, which was an absolute blast. Lore checking out that 3 o'clock position. Looks like David Kim is also kind of cycling that probe out, so you can see if he had done that at this location, you would have seen that Overlord coming in at close positions. So he knows that Lore is not at a close position at least, or he's sending that Overlord on delay. little, I guess, tip there for Protoss players. Um, Lore, great guy, came down all the way from UC Berkeley. I think he's going to lecture at the UC Berkeley class, um, or if he hasn't already. Uh, also on the UCB team, which which formed shortly after the UCSD Winter Games Fest, UC Pro League starts March 1st, so look for it, guys. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the commentary live. I will be definitely doing the commentaries off replays. I'm extremely excited about that. It looks like Lore went for a 12th pool. But Lore, I just kind of paint you guys the scene for you guys. So we have uh, the Halo finals that are happening kind of to the side, to the wall here. There's a whole bunch of people there. That's why they didn't put it on the main screen, I don't think, which is lame, because I really wanted to see the semifinals on the main screen. Um, looks like David Kim's going to get that first scout out. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to see that spawning pool, but he's yeah, he's going to turn around and try to chase that uh, drone off. He is going to have probably that first cannon on the front door, though. Um, just seeing that that probe was coming out a little bit later, and it wasn't a, a dr two drones, basically, coming out that... Uh, I should keep replacing drones with SCVs with probes in my commentaries, but whatever. I'll get I'll I'll fix that eventually. Um Cannon yet yeah, going up near that secondary to that back position, so it's a little harder to access for Zerglings. And also if you have that probe right there, basically they keep getting hit at that distance. So it's a very nice location for it. Looks like a couple Zerglings being produced to kill that probe early. Uh, now sees that spawning pool, so uh, he can still sneak off getting that Nexus first. But uh, unfortunately for Lore, he he might be able to run up on that cannon. But um, it depends a lot on timing. Lore still hasn't scouted David Kim's base. Keep in mind, he's only checked that 3 o'clock position. He doesn't know otherwise that drone trying to cycle that 3 o'clock position to get a scout there, it looks like. Zerglings have started to push out. Looks like that Nexus now down. So there is a slight opportunity here. He's not going to have the speed to really go for a push. He might be able to kill the probe. Uh, and go for and kind of do a run by here. Yeah, it looks like he's headed to that 9 o'clock position, unfortunately. So uh, although there is an Overlord here, it's coming across. It's going to see that drone and immediately, I'm sorry, that probe, he did it again. He's going to cycle through, uh, come to the 6 o'clock, and it looks like that second cannon already warping in. So I think uh, Lore lost some opportunity. He was able to kill that first scouting drone, uh, first scouting probe, though. Let's see if he can get the second one. And uh, interesting enough, immediately taking that 3 o'clock base. Wow. Um, so going to take a hatchery here. And we'll see if David Kim can really, uh, yeah, if he'll be able to spot that out. It's not a typical thing you'll see from a Zerg player, so interesting play early from Lore. He's also got that probe to create the blockade, and immediately putting a hatchery down. So this is really intelligent play here from Lore. What Lore's doing is he's kind of showing three hatchery. Um, this is, you know, a standard three hatchery build here. Um, but he's actually got a fourth hatchery here at the 3 o'clock position, so he's going to have a bit more production, perhaps a bit more gas if he decides to go 3 gas quickly to go for higher tier tech. And if he can deny this scout, if he can either pin this probe in, oh, let's see if this probe cycles to 3 o'clock. Um, but at the very least, what uh, essentially what David Kim's going to be thinking is he's going to be thinking 3 hatchery build, when in fact Lore's gone for a 4 hatchery build here. We'll see if he cycles into a 5 hatchery build and in fact goes uh, Hydralisk. Uh, well, at this stage, usually that's what you'll see at the four hydralisks and that probe, not a lot of health. Honestly, I think what Lore should do is he should just put some zerglings here um, and just let the rest of the zerglings uh, hunt them down. See if he does do this. Zealot's being produced in the meantime. Looks like we do have that side core up. Overlord sneaking in. Unfortunately, a little bit distracted here. As you can see, he doesn't have that gas. Uh, again, to get back to my earlier point, painting the scene. So Halo Finals happening at the wall, and there's absolutely no standing room behind these guys. Um, they're basically... There, uh, there's about, I would say, 10 people behind each of them. Uh, Lore has his girlfriend directly behind him, kind of praying, which was uh, kind of awesome, I thought. Um, 
and it was just yeah it was just great um just seeing it and actually i think after game two people actually applauded because the match i'm telling you game two is fun it looks like he's going to sneak out he is going to see that layer upgrading so again he's not going to expect this third base to be up um that third base fourth hatchery to be up and a creep colony going down in the front door to deny additional scouts second overlord pushing up just to sneak and david came a little bit late wow quite a bit late um on getting this uh getting this starport down so Again, uh, still hasn't put down a second gas, but yeah, it's going to be a little bit late on this gas, uh, things like that. I expected to see it um, somewhat sooner here. Um, and uh, yeah, this three o'clock look. Fortunately for him, the mule is going to come up somewhat later. It looks like that probe scout was in fact killed. Um, wow, lucky. Got the right circling that saw, hey, one kill right there. Uh, now finally getting that gate out. Usually you want it right after your cybernetic score comes up, but I guess a little bit late on mining that gas. Uh, and it looks like he's putting that second gas down now. No weapons one yet. Producing a Dragoon, perhaps that's why, because he's producing that first Dragoon. So a delay on gas as a result. So uh, there is a Spire, so there will be Mulisks, but um, we'll see if he can scout this out, because David Kim, keep in mind, he's in the dark. He's only seen three hatcheries. He hasn't seen tech. He's, uh, I assume he's going to be expecting Mulisks, because he didn't see the Hydralisk den go down. It looks like he's got that Citadel of a Dune down, as well as two gateways. Uh, Zergling's coming to the 3 o'clock position just to defend, just in case. Just kind of going to hang out there in case some pressure comes out. Looks like a drone checking that back corner. Uh, I thought he was going to take that as well. doesn't look like he is, though. And a drone coming out to the front position and putting down an evolution chamber. Now, this is really going... Let's uh, Maybe he's just going to let this scout through. This is really going to screw um, David Kim up. He's going to see this evolution chamber, and he's going to be expecting early infantry off that early carapace upgrade. And uh, he's already... Yeah, and he's got that weapons one cycling now. So he's going to be expecting infantry. He's not going to be thinking mutalisks. Uh, and that spire should be, yeah, about halfway finished. And we'll see... Uh, that first Corsair will be produced. We'll see if it does scouting or if it's just going to go over, uh, after overlords. The probe killed by that sunken colony almost immediately. Spore colony going up as well. But with that evolution chamber, I'm not sure that uh, David Kim's really going to be expecting a mutalisk attack uh, rather than a hydralisk attack. And Lore's in a good position. He's got the economy to shift really between the two. Still doesn't have a hydralisk done down. Uh, and I don't see cannons. Looks like they're, the pylons are in position to put cannons down, but I'm not seeing cannons in the back of David Kim's base. Uh, he is getting... looks like he's going to go for a zealot archon attack rather than... Um, any uh, a DT attack here, getting that Templar archives down, probably to get size storm DTs. Nevertheless, um, uh, high Templar, no, nevertheless, uh, obviously not going to want Dark Templar. Yeah, and here's that first Corsair going after that first Overlord, rather than scouting, which is really what he needed to be doing at this stage, checking that three o'clock and pushing out with some Zealots and a Dragoon a little bit early because he doesn't have weapons. One's just halfway finished. He doesn't have the speed upgrade as well, and he's just hoping uh, that yeah, he's just catching him out of position. Another hatchery going down, so five hatcheries now, and uh, Hydralis done as well. But the Mulisks already on the way. Five, six Mulisks, and the cannons nowhere near finishing in time. Just starting with these cannons, so David Kim's going to end up losing a lot of probes and a lot maybe even lose some of his tech here depending he does have two high templar that are being produced right now unfortunately they're going to be in a very vulnerable position that could be very easily picked off a second corsair wasn't produced so david kim was expecting uh some sort of infantry force i think again because of that evolution chamber on that front door rather than uh something else and again this archon gonna get picked off nice by david kim though cycling that corsair around uh so it looks like lore is going to back out try to pick off this corsair he does have some scourge coming in Ooh, and the corsair it looks like it's running to that secondary uh, speed upgrade for those zealots is almost finished and he's pushing up these zealots to try to do some damage that dragoon getting picked off on the front and the zealots going to get stopped cold by these four sunken colonies but these mutilists just ravaging archon is up it doesn't have a lot of mobility though uh, but that corsair alongside will definitely help looks like they managed to kill the scourge by uh, going over towards this cannon line but still weapons one almost finished but still a little bit hurt these zealots running out in the field here they are speed and weapon upgraded uh, but mutilists above head they're not going to get a lot done they've got to come back to home base and go back to the protective fold of the archons of those cannons and these mutilists still going to be able to run back up and still no cannons down a second corsair being produced that first uh, so two Corsairs, honestly, against this amount of Mutalisks. With a bit of micro, Lore's not going to have any trouble really taking them down. Looks like that Corsair, yeah, coming back to home base because it knows, absolutely knows, and more looks like more Mutalisks joining up here. Yeah, both these Mutalisks going to get picked off, and the Archons can't really help. Nice position decision there, I would say, by Lore. Lore going over the cliffside where he knows the Archons really can't uh, support those those um, those Corsairs, and once again, taking out, it uh, looks like he's going to be able to take out that second Corsair, and now the Archons just kind of forced on the ground. Archons very good against Mulisks, but the problem is, is they're slow, and they 
can't go through buildings. They're not magic, so uh, they have a hard time defending this secondary. So Lore can continue with this Rass and have a lot of fun with it, or he can go back and uh, take care of these Zealots that are out in the field. Looks like the Zealots still haven't scouted this 3 o'clock. Another Sutton Colony going down just in case. But uh, yeah, and the Mulusks, uh, yeah, 